What's up, my YouTube homies? Welcome to RimWorld. Happy to have you. Um, I was going to make a video last night, but by the time I got home and done with stuff around the house, I just kind of zonked out. Wanted to make one, but I just didn't get around to it, man. So apologies for that, but we are here now. So, let's do this. <clears throat> hope you've had a good weekend. Mine hasn't been too too shabby. Finally got some rain around here, so that's kind of a good thing. As much as I hate rain, even I know when we need some. We finally had some last night, and it's been a little rainy today, too, so... Anyway. Um... Okay, so we're still focusing on this, and once I get done with that, I'm going to move this and this into there. And I don't know if I'm... I'm probably going to put some of these bookshelves, if not all of them, in there as well. It'd be kind of like a, I don't know, pseudo-library of sorts, or just general storage. Uh, okay, and once we get done with that... That should free up this space a little bit. That'll free up that space then. And then we're going to move the fabrication stuff into this little, like, fabrication uh, room, if you will. And that's what they're kind of working on right now. Now, all of this is to free up these rooms, because once I free those up, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something like a mix between... Possibly mech rechargers and or the um, bio sculptor pods, because so I'd like to get those out of people's rooms because I think it might wind up helping them out with with their like you know their their perceptions of their bedrooms and stuff. So that's what we're doing, man. At some point, I'm probably going to do something else where I can get these uh, prisoner bedroom or prisoner beds relocated. I was kind of thinking maybe like over in here, make a little room for that. I don't know yet, but it'd be kind of cool if we could relocate this stuff, relocate this stuff, maybe even that stuff as well at some point. How I would do it if I ever do do it. I'm thinking there's got to be a way to make it happen. But that's that's going to be down the road, guys. In the meantime, I think. Let's see here. Where do we stand? Alright. So I guess right now, for now, I'm going to just keep focusing on this stuff and try to get that, that stuff done. She's complaining about sleeping in the bowl. Jeez, oh, man. I totally screwed up that AC. This one, too. Sure, I understand it, but Mip was complaining apparently about sleeping in the cold 
Now you do the math on that. She's got a heater. And she's got an AC unit that was inadvertently sending its exhaust out in here, which means it's going to be warm in this room. I'm not sure I understand why she would be complaining then about sleeping in the cold. Of that because she still had the heater. But I don't know, man. Maybe that'll fix itself. Anyway, I'll reset that so that should now go back up to closer to 70. By doing this, it's going to wind up causing those rooms to more than likely overheat. But when, if and when that happens, we can just turn the heaters off. I'm going to let this run for a couple seconds because I had some coffee brewing.
came close today to playing Project Zomboid. I keep ignoring that game, man. And I mean, I love that game, don't get me wrong, but with Project Zomboid, there is a massive, massive problem in terms of enjoying it long term. You know, I mean, you get to a point after, after some point where you raid, I don't know, man, you, you raid one of the police stations, one of the military checkpoints, you stock up on groceries, you deck out a kitchen in your new base that's out there in, I don't know, the woods or something like that. And then at that point, you're like, okay, what do I do now? You know? And I love the game. I love its potential. But part of the way I think they'll eventually get that fixed is with NPCs. Now, in gaming theory, gaming design, gaming whatever, I don't know what you refer to this as, but they need to incorporate some sort of like long-term, uh, I don't know, man, like artificial, artificial intelligence design in the game where it can kind of manipulate its own development at certain uh, durations of gameplay, like, um, what is, what am I trying to explain here? Like, if, okay, look, so, for example, I'm gonna pause this real quick so I can explain this. One thing I would like to see in Project Zomboid is that the game adapts to where the player is at a certain point in time of his or her gameplay, because once you get to that point where you've got that awesome base out in the middle of nowhere and you're, you're making forays into the town centers and stuff, battling a few zombies, getting some more groceries, and then coming back to the place that you're, you're hiding out at, you, you can only do that so many times before the game gets boring as hell. Because then at that point, it's like you've got everything that you could ever want. You've got every type of firearm, you know, you've built every type of explosive you can make. I don't know, man. It just gets to a point where it's boring. So it would be awesome to see something like, for example, let's say you're at that point and you're out there in the woods, you're just kind of camping out, doing your thing and working on stuff. Where would the gang go if the zombies could herd up and follow random paths so that no place on the map would be safe indefinitely? Or at least not entirely like like with me for example i always play out there um let me cue this up for training and buff two nails yeah i want to get both of those fuck you um one place i always set up base at is out there at that uh that cabin that's north of the lumber mill if you get on the map out there on the internet you'll see what i'm talking about it's got like a well and I always go there because it's always safe, you know, it's one of the, it's probably, in my opinion, the safest place in that game. <clears throat> the little unforeseen insidiousness of doing that, though, is the fact that once you build that base up, you could probably camp out there indefinitely and never once be found. And so, therefore, therefore, it kind of defeats the purpose of the game. It's almost as if you've found some sort of exploit to the game or something in a weird way. Well, wouldn't it be cool if the natural adaptation of, for example, artificial intelligence, if it ever gets incorporated into the game, wouldn't it be cool for that to adapt naturally to the to the extent that the zombo or the zombies, they herd up, kind of like what you see in uh, Walking Dead, where they talk about you know herds of zombies and stuff. Well, wouldn't it be kind of cool if an occasional herd found its way to your facility or your base or whatever? And if they ever get to a point of actual NPCs, wouldn't it also be cool if you could have the occasional raider, like let's say for example, out there in that in that uh, cabin place that's out there in the middle of nowhere, the likelihood of having some sort of fellow survivor eventually find the place and either try to steal from you, try to kill you, or try to want to join you would, would be uh, much more likely uh, well, I don't know if it necessarily be much more likely, but the point is that if you could have something like that happen from time to time, it would give you a, it would kind of like renew a reason to keep playing the game because the long and short of it is that once you get to a certain extent of, of gameplay in that in that game, 
you're just kind of left sitting there wondering what to do next because you've encountered every other kind of thing that the game has to offer really and it just gets boring it's like you don't really have a purpose and so you know i guess what i'm trying to say here is that the game is as awesome as it is man it's got some sort of weird issue where it's as if the designers designed for the purposes of having a destination instead of a journey if that makes any kind of sense at all so i mean if they could find a way to create ongoing adaptability with with the artificial intelligence that they could potentially incorporate into the game and create some sort of like adapt adaptability where the game throws kinds of curveballs at you from time to time and in some sort of unique project zomboid way i really think that would probably be one of the best ways that they could fix that and they've really got to get it in, in order to do all of that i think they've got to get npcs incorporated into the game because if they don't ever get that done man that game's i i think people are going to lose interest in it and move away from it so i don't really know exactly what what the holdup is with that i know that they're kind of trying to work on like the animals and stuff the animal npc logic and stuff like that but it seems as if it's taken forever to do that what little I understand about it, it's my understanding that they've been talking about NPCs for years. So I don't really understand. I don't understand that. I don't understand why it's taking that long for something like that. But I'm sure they've got their reasons, man. I mean, you know, developers always do. Them, so hopefully one of these days they'll get that fixed. But like I said, man, I love the game. I, I'm actually pretty crazy about it, to be honest with you. But it's just with like every other game that's out there. It's sooner or later, stuff just gets old and redundant and monotonous and it's almost as if you're kind of addicted at that point to waiting for things like new versions and stuff because otherwise if you don't get those new versions and continual development it just always winds up being dead so i think that's kind of a thing that many games nowadays have have to confront at some point i mean they're all designing towards a destination and not really a journey and in their defense, man, that's not something easy, I think, to fix, because you're talking about a lot of weird ways in which you kind of you kind of incorporate things like, I don't know, man, like, just development styles, I guess, that have to do things where it essentially changes code bases around at certain points of time so that you can create different kinds of situations for the game player. That's one reason that I can't stand Minecraft as much as I used to, because Minecraft is kind of in a similar situation where it's like you play the game for so long, and unless you're playing with multiplayer and someone's server, and even then it this doesn't really get fixed, but even with Minecraft, it's like, despite the fact that you've got this game in Minecraft, that's, or this world in Minecraft that's freaking huge, sooner or later you discover everything that there is essentially to to discover whether it be some massive cave system some cool village you know whatever it might be sooner or later you essentially discover everything in in concept that there is to discover and at some point even with multiplayer servers you still feel super lonely in the game it's it's like forlorn you know there's not really much of a sense of an outer world with anything and one thing I always kind of thought would be cool with Minecraft to kind of get around that would be creating this type of game mode where every chunk that gets developed or procedurally generated in the world, you might have like a 1 in 10 chance to discover, or you might you might have a 1 in 10 chance of the chunk having with its generation a random portal that you can either turn on or relocate somewhere else and then turn on and that portal will be like a special type of portal that links your world to a world of another person's server that gets officially registered with Microsoft and the the official Microsoft registration process would go without saying that you would have certain kinds of security standards that you'd have to satisfy in order to be on that list but once it's on that list uh, the Minecraft code then at that point would generate chunks every so often and you, like I said you'd have like a 1 in 10 chance of that chunk being generated with one of these special kinds of portals 
And at that point, then you're essentially talking about interlinked worlds of other people's servers. And then at that point, you're also then talking about things like multiversal types of trade routes and alliances and, you know, faction states and stuff like that. And you could all go to war with one another and stuff. I just think I, I think that would be a really awesome way to kind of open up the outer world and make it to where you don't really feel as if it's only you playing in that entire galaxy, you know, because that that's a massive problem with a lot of games these days. You kind of encounter that with Skyrim. You encounter that with Minecraft. You encounter that with Project Zomboid. And even to a degree, you could argue that you somewhat encounter that in this game, too, with RuneWorld, because with these colonists, you're stuck on this one planet. You don't have any real control over how your colony interrelates with the society on the planet that you're on, or even out, out or beyond the, the planet, like in the solar system and stuff. And I, I'm not sure if there's mods or something that try to fix that with this game, but I know that with all of those other games, there's a lot of people out there that kind of, I think they're beginning to kind of see some of these kinds of development issues with these games. And it just doesn't really seem as if there's many developers out there that are trying to tackle that. I mean, they're trying to make these worlds huge, like what you see with, what's that game called? Star Citizen or something like that. And of course, Minecraft, where you've got these worlds that are absolutely huge. And No Man's Sky, I think, is another one. They've got these massive galaxies and stuff, but they all feel empty. It's like there's not really any kind of cohesive sense of society anywhere or any type of outer world you know, ongoing government issues between different governments or different regimes. It's like, I want to play Minecraft, and I want to, I want to be able to walk into a village and see all of these people interacting, you know, seeing people doing, like, shopping at, like, weaponsmiths and, and, I don't know, man, grocery stores even or something. And walking around and seeing, like, NPCs that are handing out newspapers about things that are going on in the world between different kinds of factions and stuff. That would be so awesome. And, and like, you could, like, I don't know, uh, join one of the factions and, and try to fight with that faction for whatever it is that they're trying to do. Or, let's, like, let's say, for example, you go to one of the... One of the... Uh, uh, sheriff buildings or something and say hey you know my name is blah 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 I want to try to enlist and trying to help out with whatever bounties are available and that sheriff or constable or whatever would say okay here here's one bounty on a local regional threat that this X Y and Z faction or nation state's been dealing with feel free to do whatever you can you'll get a thousand gold pieces in the event that you take care of them so then you're given a map and you go find this cave or lair that this Batty is holed up in, you know, stuff like that. It's like that, that's the kind of thing that would make someone want to keep playing a game instead of just making a damn castle and then, you know, filling it out with all sorts of cool stuff. And then once you're done doing that, then what? It's like, okay, grow some crops, I guess. I don't fucking know. <clears throat> but that kind of stuff just drives me nuts, man, because it's like, it seems somewhat uh, understandable, at least in concept. But there, there must be like rest, like development restrictions or constraints or something that prevent these shops and, and developers from doing that kind of stuff. And, I'm, I'm, and as somebody who programs, I mean, I don't come from game development. I come from like web app and you know website development. I specialize in user interface design and stuff. And that's one reason you hear me bitch and complain all the time about RimWorld's UI and everything. But but as somebody who at least has some level of experience with some of this kind of stuff, um. I can understand how some how these concepts I'm talking about would be pretty damn difficult to do. So I don't really like hold it against them or anything like that, but it would just be so cool if they could figure out a way to do these kinds of things. And with the advent or artificial intelligence stuff becoming more and more mainstream anymore, it seems as if we might be on the cusp of some of that beginning to come to, come to fruition. So that's my hope. Anyway. That's my tangent. That might that might have been the coffee talking. <laughs> so, all right, man. Let's let us play this. So now we've got some more blight to screw around with. And by the way, that's something that I want to try to do too at some point. I mentioned this last time. Um, I think it's two spaces. Is that blight can't can't uh, can't travel beyond. And from what little I understand and the research that I've done. 
there's essentially ways that you can create crops where you like create a crop area of X, Y, and Z amount of space and then separate it from the next crop by about two spaces. That way it kind of encapsulates the amount of blight that you that you wind up dealing with whenever it comes up. So at some point in the future I'm gonna probably wind up doing something like that. deal with this than the stupid conduit explosions. Sometimes whenever I think about artificial intelligence, I think about how awesome it would be uh, um, how awesome it would be to have something like a chat GP type of thing with stuff like, for example, Skyrim. And I know that there's, you know, people out there that are trying to do that. From everything that I've seen, though, results are next. You can tell that, like for example, whenever you're talking to Lydia, like one of the mods that are out there that are really popular for this type of stuff, from what I've seen on YouTube, you can still tell that you're, you know, talking to the AI and everything. And so I think they're, they've got a long ways to go, I think, with phonetic stuff, in terms of like how you pronounce things with AI, because you can always tell that you're talking to AI and not like a... I mean, I'm not expecting to... to I'm not ex necessarily expecting it to be perfect, but it, it's got to be better than what it is nowadays. And you know what I'm talking about whenever you go out there and you listen to some of the stuff on YouTube and everything of some of those mods that they showcase nowadays. But it is pretty awesome, though, the amount of progress they're making with it. I sometimes use the chat GPT thing uh, just to learn more about things that I'm kind of interested in, whether it be stuff about like ancient civilizations or something like that. Like I was, there's this guy named Ian Crossland, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. He's one of Tim Pool's people. And he sometimes has live streams of games and stuff. And he had one on there the other day where he was talking about ancient civilizations and, and 
the top of the topic of Atlantis came up, and I got on there on ChatGPT and started asking it questions about things like what the most plausible theory is about where it may have been and all the stuff. And I mean, it took me on a rabbit hole about all that kind of stuff. That was really awesome to just kind of sit there, and, you know, chat with it about. And I also use. <laughs> I don't know if, if if you look at my channel, you'll see that I've got some uh, music things out there that I've been working on. All of that stuff has been AI generated, man. I mean, it's really insane how far they've really come with some of that stuff. Why like, can I not? So I mean, it's it really is neat. Some of that music that I generated, man, it really sounds pretty awesome as far as I'm concerned. So they really are coming a long way with it, and I think at some point in the future they'll they'll probably master it well enough to where you can't really make a distinction between whether or not it's an AI voice or you know an actual person's voice. Which in a way it's kind of scary to think about, but the possibilities of what that means in terms of things like gaming is that's like a next renaissance type of thing. Whatever gets to that point. I don't understand why Oski keeps being on the verge of breaking down. He says that he's a night owl in daytime and he's complaining about that, but I don't know how that's... Well, does that mean then... Okay, I bet I know. So in other words, Oski, we need to kind of inverse these things. I should have done that a long time ago, but it just kind of dawned on me just now. So there's that. Now, um, is there anything else that we want?
it's basically this battle's over. Cats are gonna wind up having another kiss. Which I guess I don't mind. You know? I mean, it's, it's the whole reason that we build all these additional bedrooms, I guess. But... If it curries favor, maybe that'd be worth it. Is that all I need to do?
She's still got is that ever since I added these storage shells, they've been putting food in there. Mm -hmm.
is it then that these aren't being selected? Does that make any sense? Okay, well, storage, okay, so what I'm hoping now is that they'll prioritize using these, since I've indicated that it's preferred.
if one of those exotic traders could have come to town, we might have been able to sell some of those, but... why it's so hard to get a freaking male uh, thrumbo. I've been trying to do that for a long time and I've not been able to for some reason.
lost him, I'd have been better. Still need some pants though. Winter has begun. Some serious ass on the steel front. Seven thousand something. It's not too shabby. Look at this. This is nuts. Drinking coffee, man. I'm still yawning. What's up with that? Get this done, man.
just now remembered that you can't reinstall these stupid things. So we're gonna have to build some new ones when the time comes. Unfortunately. I was thinking maybe there would be a way to get more seats with a different table configuration. I still think it might be. I gotta admit though, man, they're kicking my ass with everything. I just wish we could get this stuff done down here. We could start moving stuff out. And
first time I've seen that. I didn't realize you could have Thrimbo fur, but I guess it makes sense if you think about it. Savannah's kind of kicking some ass. She's been the only one that I've seen actually go outside and actually start knocking stuff down. If we had, like, if we just had five mechanoids, that whole thing, so I, can't, I can't remember which ones those are, but if we just had five of those, we would be running out of space for
there's something here. Okay, so with this space, I could finally have a clean room, or, or, or whatever you call that, you know, clean room slash whatever, for the uh, med bay stuff. The only problem in doing that, though, I mean, hell, I could make that right now, but where it is, it's just that I feel like, oh, should I do that? Yeah. Well, let's just now I'm just gonna go ahead and sprint. Um I'm gonna do this because that means that I can maybe use it for some growth. Okay. 
Okay, that being said, it looks like this is finally done. How can we exploit this area now? We did it. Um, of course we can. Let's see what you're doing. spacious in there. Actually, put the yaks in here, I think. Clone the bison, I think, in here. I'm trying to remember how I did this last time. stuff. Oh. If we move the, well, if we put the med in here,
Thinking that if I put the wall all the way over to through here and then break these up in halves, in one I can put the prisoners and then the other I can make a clean room. And then over in here, you have all of my fabrication stuff, shop stuff. Maybe a throne room. So at some point, that's probably something that we're going to wind up needing anyway.
statues and just hire him in Rex Store. Looks like we're actually getting some rain right now. Let's see real quick on my other monitor. The radar is looking like. Uh, let me see here. Oh, we're just getting a little cell. Little amounts of it. We're actually expecting a few little bouts of rain in our area this week. It's kind of a need to rain. Okay, so anyway, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out exactly what kind of layout I'm wanting with this place. This is little section here. Because if I do do something kinda of like this, I can put the prisoner beds in here. Make this the med area use this for miscellaneous maybe some storage shells or something like maybe that could be where I put the medicine and stuff yeah and I think that would probably free things up Thanks for your work in terms of 
outside. Another load of some of these freighters there. I've had those those things before, and the last time I used one in, in this game, the colonist that I gave it to wound up battling cancer all the damn time. It was stomach cancer, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, come on, man. That's BS. Alright, fine. Oh, I can't. I have 
about that. I'm not doing it because I'm finally beginning to get on my feet on stuff. This would be the perfect way in which that would completely get derailed. So, I'm not doing it. Even if it's only for eight days. Should I do that? I just wish I could look at them first to see if they would be worth it. once we start tackling these things, but it's too much of a gamble. Whenever you start taking in refugees and stuff, man, you just never know who they're going to wind up with. And the next, next thing you know, your place is like being burned down and shit like that. It's just not worth it. It's been a pretty good episode. I haven't had any major catastrophes or
Thing, it's got to be pointed the other way. Yes. It's be kind of cool though, having finally having a sterile room.
Let's put
for that is because A, if they get hurt, and B, if any of them ever need to take prisoners. with some of this stuff lately. I think I'm going to pause it right here. Put about two hours and just about 15 minutes in. I don't know when I'm going to make another episode, man. I mean, I I usually say stuff like, well, I'll make another episode tonight or some sort of shit like that. It never happens. So I don't know when, it, when it's going to be. But tomorrow, Tuesday, who knows? Something like that. But in the next episode, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to keep focusing on this stuff because there's, there's a lot of stuff that I need to do because I don't like this layout and you know with things being the way they are it, I, I had it in my, in my mind that I was going to try to move all of this stuff over there as well so that's going to add another kind of wrench to the fan but as I was sitting here adding all this stuff into this room I was thinking to myself man it would be cool to be able to have some of this space to do stuff with 
with as well. So I don't know how all of this is going to play out. But I'm going to try to put it all in here. And I'm going to try to eventually relocate these med storage things maybe into here if I can. I don't know how much room I'm going to have that's going to be pushing it. But it's really going to be kind of cool, though, by the time I get all this done, man. Because it's going to wind up freeing this up, freeing this one up, freeing this up, hopefully freeing that one up. And by the time I move these bookshelves up here into this stuff up here, we'll have that one freed up. And I'm going to re remake these uh, reliquaries up in here, too. And I might wind up trying to convert this into some sort of throne room at some point. So it's going to free that up as well. So, I mean, think about all the room and stuff that we're going to have now. It's going to be pretty insane. So, but there's a lot of organization that I need to redo with a, a lot of this stuff, man. Because right now I'm just trying to get things into the room and then revisit everything to the point where I start tidying things up. And what? What's going on with Andy? Anyway, that's where we're going to end it, so let me do a save there, and I will see you when I see you guys again, and, you know, like I always say in all of my videos, have a safe week, stay out of trouble, and we'll see you when we see you. Later.